Welcome to One Sharp Sword, cutting through to what matters most. I'm your host, Dr. P, Dr. Wayne Purnell, the Exponential Success Coach. Today we're talking about leadership. I am here in New York City, away from my home office. For those watching this, you'll notice the different background. There's not my uh, books in the background. There's a hotel bed off to my right side. It's uh, something I do regularly is come back and forth to New York. I'm based out of the San Francisco Bay Area, and I am traveling in order to make good connections. I'm traveling to uh, continue working on speaking. I have uh, some amazing work that I'm doing on a stage at the Triad Theater here in New York. So a lot is going on. And I wanted to share that with you as I bring you the idea of the dilemma of leadership is the dilemma of leaders. The dilemma that leaders face is leading. And, and most leaders feel like they do a good job at it. And when polls are given, to employees. What we see is that employees like their leaders, but they don't always feel that their leaders are leading. And sometimes employees don't like their leaders. And guess what? 4.3 million Americans are choosing to move on from their workplace every single month as a result. Um, people don't leave, they don't leave organizations. People leave people. And um, sometimes leaving people is hard. Sometimes leaving the organization is easy. Um, but usually it's the connection that is broken somehow and people move on from people looking for a better culture. A better culture. I did, uh, I did a speech for the Business Council of New York State not that long ago. And we looked at what were the key factors that caused this, what has been called the great resignation. The great resignation was, you know, where the 4.3 million Americans per month, per month are choosing to leave their workforces and work sites and go to different places. <clears throat> Why are they going? They're going because they don't have a sense of belonging. They're going because, um, the pandemic taught us all that we could do something different, that we could live our lives differently. Um, and they're going to find a place where they feel belonging, where they feel valued, where they can contribute meaningfully. So if this is pertinent to you as a leader, pay attention to this. If this is pertinent to you as somebody that's in the world, force. Pay attention to this. And if you happen to be an entrepreneur, pay attention to this because here's the thing. Who's responsible for your happiness? You are, right? So uh, who puts the things on your calendar? You do. And one of the things I, I was just talking to uh, one of my kids, they're all older at this point. I was just talking with him and noting that uh, your calendar, like, who do you work for? Well, he's like, well, what do you mean? Who do I work for? I have this job. Da, da, da. It's like, you work for you. You work for you. You hire yourself out to a company. So you, when you think that way, you have to think about, are you treating your primary employee, you, the best way you could be treating yourself? And I think that's an important mindset shift as well. So how does this relate to leadership? Well, if you're in a position of leading others, and that could be a team, a company, a full organization, a family, or yourself, you have to look at the culture that you're creating for yourself. What culture are you creating for your team? What are you creating for your team? What are the key features of a great job these days? One of them is flexibility. Flexibility. 
you know that it was 1938, 1938, 84 years ago at the time of this recording, 1938, that the Fair Labor Standards Act was enacted. And what does that mean to you? That means that before World War II even started, we were being given the standard of a 40 hour work week. You had to work nine to five, which because of lunch breaks got extended to eight to five. The 40 hour work week was established before World War II, coming out of the Depression. So um, that tells you something about how we've accepted things. You know, that one of the last podcasts I did was on what are we tolerating? Well, apparently we've all been tolerating what a 40 hour work week is. Of course, that's standard. We go to work, we work our, you know, five days, we do our, you know, eight hours a day, taking a break for lunch, we break away and work for the weekend, Yahoo. And that's not the way that people want to live anymore. And that's important as a leader. It's important for you as an individual to recognize that the pandemic gave us some really good information. My commute, when I'm not traveling across the country, my commute shortened to about 12 seconds. I could get up. I could throw on a shirt. <laughs> Pants optional. Uh, I could throw on a shirt and I could sit in front of my computer and have my calls with my clients. I could do podcasts. I could do uh, television interviews. That no longer required me to jump on a plane and go to studio to do that. I had my own studio. So this is important to know because what do we all want as a result of coming out of the pandemic? We want two, <laughs> two F words here. One is flexibility. And the other is freedom. We want to know that we can do our jobs that are meaningful and we can do it in a flexible way that if we wanted to start at 6 a.m., we could start at 6 a.m., we could take our breaks, we could complete, uh, take another break, do more work, complete, take a break. And we want freedom. We want to know that if something comes up, there is that flexibility and that I could work on my own and get my job done and all that stuff and then call it a day. <laughs> like one of the things that happened during the pandemic is we all started working longer hours. We would get up at six or earlier and check our email first thing and basically be at work from first thing in the morning until, well, there's just one more thing to check, da, 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 right? After dinner, before bed, and suddenly we're working 14 and 16 hour days and being less productive. And when that sort of rolled back with a, a pendulum swing of now I'm not sleeping as much because I have what's called a bedtime <laughs> revenge, bedtime procrastination, I gave everything I had to my work and now I want time for me and we'd stay up later to have me time. That sort of caused us to go, wait a second, what's really needed, what's needed for, for and from me in my job, is my job that important in the, in the whole scheme of things? And, um, and why can't I do it on my own hours? And this is why, leading right now is really important because to create a culture where you move from the great resignation to the great retention, you need to be thinking about what culture are you creating for your, your organization. And if you are a solopreneur and you're in an organization of one, this uh, is pertinent to you as well. If you happen to be working for an organization where you have set hours, pay attention to what the culture says and see if you can influence the culture by offering some suggestions about perhaps a flexible work schedule or what are the things that you'd like to see. Sometimes, sometimes it's as simple as can we change the lighting in here? 
sometimes it's that that changes the culture. It changes, like, I have a voice. I wanted it brighter. I got more lighting, right? So sometimes it's as simple as that. So how do you create a culture? I call it a culture of caring. And there's some great research. There's some great research out there that talks about the need for leaders to be checking in with their employees. I call employees team members, by the way. I never say staff ever uh, when referring to, to team members because staff just sounds like some sort of, sort of infection that needs curing. So team members, how do you check in with them as individuals? And that is the first thing. People want to be a part of, not apart from. And when we've got hybrid workforces, it's really important to incorporate everybody and not just start paying attention to the people who show up to work because those that can't show up to work and you go, hey, there's a party. Uh, for those that are local, you're actually being exclusive and you're cutting people out. So if you're going to do a party, you send party boxes to the people that are remote and can't join you and you have them join you on, on uh, video. This goes back to culture. This goes back to culture. This goes back to culture. What culture are you building? And the hardest part about leadership is leading and believing that you're doing a good job when you really need to be paying attention to, am I, what do I value? Well, I value, I value inclusiveness. Where have you missed the mark? Um, because you might be patting yourself on the back for one area where this whole other area is, is aching for recognition. Uh, and whether that is in diversity or whether that is in simply the hybrid workforce, pay attention. And if you're doing any wandering by uh, management by wandering around, pay attention to who you talk to. And are there people you're not talking to? And make sure that you do that too. So your culture is one of inclusion. Your culture is one of, these are, the, these are the bullet points that you really need to get. Your culture needs to be one of inclusion. It needs to be one of creativity. And it needs to be one of, well, flexibility, right? Where you are listening to what people want. And when we talk about inclusion, it really is, are you paying attention? Are you going to each individual and saying, hey, how's it going? I see you, right? A lot of people just want to be seen. A lot of people say they don't want to be seen. And yet, if you struck up a person-to-person -person conversation, hey, how's it going? Thanks for doing this. This looks great, right? That's so important. The other piece of that, if you want to extend it, this looks great because, and let's say somebody is, um, let's say you run a retail store and you're, you've got somebody who's stocking shelves, right? And you come by and you go, this looks great. Thanks. And then you wander away. It's like, hmm, okay, he noticed, she noticed, that's good. Or this looks great because when our customers come through, they're going to see the best set possible. You made this look so good for our customers. Thank you. That is a different message, right? What's the outcome? What is the end user going to see? And can you make that pertinent or relative or directly tied to what the individual is doing or working on? So those are key points. Leadership is more than um, creating a vision although that's where it starts. And the vision is based on your values, which is where it really starts. Leadership is living into that vision. And you do that by creating inclusion. You do that by creating uh, a sense that people's contributions, that your team members' contributions individually and collectively, when you get a team working together, it's very powerful. So individually and collectively, that their efforts matter and they matter to the end user or the customer. And you, you need to be able to convey that the work that they're doing is meaningful. And that is 
one of the ways of doing that is to say this is this does matter to a customer and even more important maybe is and this is why you know when the customer uses this imagine what they'll be doing with it um, belonging is a big deal and a lot of people don't feel like they belong right now and i think that's up to each of us as individuals no matter what our role is to be able to say you matter i see you you belong you're a part of uh, of this very important group whether that's your family whether that's your friend group whether that's your team members uh and, and no matter what your role you could say that to other team members that you're working with it's so important to say you belong right i'm so happy we're together and we're working on this stuff together belonging is missing it has been missing for two and a half years so i think it's important that we each spread that message all right leadership is complex leadership sometimes requires management so where leadership is out front management is hands-on and very often leaders need to be back into hands-on and especially back into eyes on like i see you just acknowledge human to human right okay that's it for this one thanks for joining me we've got a big month ahead and uh, a lot of things to be doing go make your difference keep making your magic i'll see you here next time i'm dr p dr wayne purnell this is one sharp sword cutting through to what matters most. I'll see you here next time. Thank you.